uh, of encouragement to us today as we kick off, and we're going to try and close by seven. Um, from Hebrews uh, six verse one, and from Hebrews nine uh, verse uh, fourteen. It says, therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God. I'm just stopping there. Um, I do want to focus on repentance from dead works for a moment. The scripture does go on to say we'll do this if God permits. And so we're permitted today. We want to just talk a little bit about the works we want to leave behind. Hebrews 9:14 also says, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience um, from dead work to serve the living God. Praise the Lord. So the prayer points I wanted to encourage us with today was that we would grow, number one, beyond the fundamentals. And it's good to have the fundamentals, but what I'm finding in my walk is that there are so many um, without the fundamentals. There are so many without the basics in place. And it's a shame that we have been in church for so long sometimes, and yet we have not mastered some of the very basic things, what the scripture calls the, the principles of the doctrine, um, about having faith towards God, but also from repentance from dead works. That's turning from works that are dead, things that don't carry life so many believers are stuck and their life is filled up with things that don't carry life they're doing things that don't reproduce spiritual life it was paul that said i believe in uh the corinthians or galatians that if you sow to the flesh you will of the flesh reap corruption but if you sow to the spirit you'll reap life everlasting we can't grow spiritually doing dead things and as we come into times of fasting we often are encouraged to put away Lots of things, whether it's the television, the social media, you know, you can't spend our time in things that are going to detract from spiritual discipline and spiritual growth. It's a time to put those things away. I'm not saying you can't bring them back up, but I'm saying we need to really focus. Do we need to pick back up some of the things that we're putting down? We would stay more spiritual, more focused if we would actually turn completely from dead works. Repentance means change your mind, right? So to change the way you think about the things that you once took pleasure in to change your mind about the things that you thought once were uh, a good use of time. We need to grow beyond these, these basics and let us get to a place where we can put aside the things that would so easily beset us. Paul says not everything is a sin. He says some things, uh, all things are lawful, but they're not all expedient. It's, it's not against the law to watch television. It's not against the law um, to, to go to a cinema. It's not against the law to um, watch sports and play sports and do all these things. But not all these things are um, expedient. They're not profitable. And if you find yourself in a place where you're giving more time to the flesh and more time to the world than you are to God, then these things become idols and then they become a sin to you. And so we want to, at this time, really put away the dead works, put away the things that aren't producing spiritual life. Definitely, let's not, let's not sit in front of television. Definitely, let's not be... Um, watching uh, miserable news cycles over and over again. Let's put these things aside for a while and focus on God, focus on his word and what he's saying to us. Uh, we want purging from the desire for dead things. We want to be purged from the ways of the flesh, purged from the things that we, we naturally wanted, the things that the world naturally gravitate towards. Pride of life is a big one. Amen. The things that we, we acquire in life and the things that we want to be seen to be doing, we want to be seen to be with certain people, seen to have certain status in life. We want to get rid of all those things. Status in this world is not important. If we don't belong to Christ, we're nothing. If we're not his completely 100%, we're nobody. Not being with Christ is, being without Christ is, 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 is a, what can I say? You can have everything in this life, but if you don't have Christ, you're nothing. You can be the president, the prime minister, the king. You, have, you don't have Christ. You're, you're not better than me at all. So we want to, in this time, develop a routine. I've put here for growth. And as, as I try to reiterate, I want us to try to institute in our private life and in our family life a schedule that's going to work for us as a family. Speak with your spouse. Get the ideal plan looked at and agreed and said this is what we would love to be able to do every day 
We might miss it by 10%. Some days we might miss it completely in other days. But this is going to be our default position. This is going to be our default prayer life. This is how we're going to run our home. And let's try and get a routine that's going to, that's going to include growth. It's going to make you grow. I put a, um, a regimen for spiritual excellence, a diet for champions and spiritual, and spiritual giants. You know, those athletes, they know if they want to compete at the highest level, there's a regimen they have to follow. Well, I want you to look at your life and say, if I'm going to be the best spiritual version of me, if I'm going to be the best Christian I can be, here's the regimen that I'd need to put in place. And it's not to make it impossible. It's not to put something in your life that's going to be, you know, just going to make you tired and you won't be able to function. That's not what it's about. It's about having something that's functional, that glorifies God. So we want to pray that during this time, we will be able to settle on a regimen that's going to really cause us to grow from strength to strength. Many of us are in a routine that won't, won't allow us to grow. The routines that we have don't give us space for growth. The meditation in the word is not deep enough. The time in God's presence is not, is not sincere enough. It's not deep enough. It's not long enough. And so we want to create spaces and time for growth. With this, we also want to pray for unity within the family around a spiritual cause. Without unity, you can't really keep a spiritual regimen. Um, the enemy that we, me and you have is an enemy of our spiritual rhythm. He just wants to continually disrupt spiritual rhythm so that we can't have continued spiritual growth. He doesn't mind you having a good Sunday. He doesn't even mind you having a good week. He looks for the doors in your life and my life and in your relationships that he can use to derail spiritual maturity and to derail spiritual uh, momentum and rhythm. And so we want unity within the family that we can spot an enemy when he comes. We can see when that's the adversary trying to um, break down our spiritual unity, trying to disrupt our spiritual rhythm. We want to uh, be on one mind about this. And then we want to have a firm grip, I put here, on external causes that will help us to retain focus and give us fuel. And by this, I mean, if the only thing you're ever praying about is your family and your circumstances, you're going to get bored and that, that's, you're going to lose inspiration. We need a focus that's bigger than us. We need to focus on the poor and the needy, the fatherless and the widow. We actually need something that ties us to a physical work, something that when we think about is worse than our problem. It's more, it's more, there's more needs than what we have, right? If, you're, if you think that you have the worst problems in the world, then you, you, you probably haven't watched the news enough. Um, you haven't talked to, to saints enough and believers enough. There's always somebody struggling a little bit more than you or a whole lot more than you. And for each of us, there's a specific calling that God has called us to do. We must be, and tonight in the Bible study, we'll, we'll talk about this before we um, shut the Bible study down. We're going to talk about the things that we need to be praying into. The, there's the areas that we need to be building up our expertise in for the calling that God has upon our life. If your life is just about the nine to five and going to work and taking care of your family, then you're not opening up any spiritual space for a spiritual fulfillment uh, for your spiritual cause. There should be something that if you have nothing to pray about, you're praying about the poor, you're praying about the need, whatever area of ministry God has put you to focus on for people to receive the Holy Spirit, whatever it is. You know, I've been, that's one of my areas. I said, Lord, we, you, you need to help us to get people to the, receiving the Holy Spirit. To show us the quickest route to help people to receive the Holy Spirit, whatever that is. The apostles were able to come to town, lay hands, and they knew once the apostles came that the likelihood of people receiving the Holy Ghost was increased. But we want to be specialists in these things. So if, if we're not there, then that's at this pray on, into that daily. You know, have a focus that's not you. Have something that's going to burden you down that isn't just your family and your needs. And these things will help us to get off our knees to pray. When we are in, the, in, in between getting up and staying in bed and we're not sure, when you remember that thing, it makes you want to get out of the bed because you know that's what you're called to do. That's what you need to, to strengthen your muscles, to lift. So, so this is what we want to pray about today. And as we are going over these 21 days, this is to create spiritual uh, giants. Is to make you revival in your assembly, strengthen your community that wherever you go, something divine has to follow, something powerful has to happen because you're in that church and because you're in that community and because you decided to pray in that over those things, something changes. That's where we want to get to, where we grow in spiritual might, in spiritual muscle, and in spiritual um, excellence. I think I put there, yeah, uh, a regimen for spiritual excellence. 
Uh, I've heard people just talk about black excellence. I'm, I'm not down for just black excellence. We want spiritual excellence. We want an excellent spirit, the spirit of God to be manifested and to be seen. That by the time we come out of this season, we are on a trajectory that's only going to take us higher and higher and higher. I hope you receive the spirit of what we're trying to do during this fast. And I pray the Lord will um, strengthen you in your house to go through in Jesus.